Tell me a little bit more, tell our audience a bit more about your, your grandfather, Doug Grindstaff, and where he came from and what he, his career. So, so he was a, he's always been a very inventive, um, curious and energetic guy uh, and uh, very politically progressive. So as mm -hmm. things changed, he would change his opinions about things. So that, that's always been really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, and I wish I could have talked with him more politically uh, mm -hmm. when I was a little younger. I just didn't realize what he could offer and, until I got older. Um, in fact, I didn't even know he worked on Star Trek until I got older. So I was, I was watching those reruns with the family on every Sunday when I was, you know, in, in, in early eighties and, uh, how did it dawn on you? Do you really see, knowing you see his name on it or, you no, know, how did... I, I didn't, I mean, I, I don't think <laughs> it didn't even occur to me as a credits role. You know, I, 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 if, all I know is, oh, I love the episode with the alien pizza, you know, and then, <laughs> And, and, and oh, the furry creatures one, he, he, he. So, mm -hmm. and then I, I started getting the moral dilemma aspects of the show, which I really loved. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really loved all the characters, um, but yeah, it was, it didn't really click until I got a little older. Um, I would say maybe around the age of 12, 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and by then I was like, that's really cool. And I still wasn't quite super excited. I was just simply happy yeah. like that's really cool he worked on that yay and then yeah. i learned more and more and was like oh my oh my gosh that that was my grandpa whoa <laughs> okay um i need to know more you know it's like yeah oh i have this thing i have to know because you i don't want to lose that opportunity so i started yeah. talking with him more and as I'm i got more, more and more conversations i record some of them um but yeah so he started in the, uh he he was in the military and he mm -hmm. was in uh the vietnam and the korean aspect of mm -hmm the war and then he popped out of that got hired uh, his brother helped him get hired at i think it was rko yeah um he's just like he didn't know what he was going to do after military yeah and sure. his brother's just like just come on over here you already kind of know how to figure out tech stuff pretty fast just get your <laughs> button here i'll show it to you you'll pick it up he ended up picking it up and running running so the department. Yeah. then it yeah and so then it was that to you know desi and and columbia and he was briefly the VP there because there was like nobody in the seat for a second. And mm -hmm. he even had his hand in a pocket at Disneyland doing the loop for the, the small world ride, uh, which everybody hates. <laughs> but uh, we found out later when they were um, restoring the soundtrack from the old show, the, the original series, they found all these masters that were generated by the music department as opposed to the sound effects department. Ah. Yeah, there was like this this electronic box that uh, one of the one of the music guys brought in. It was like an organ box and like many of those classic sounds were performed on this thing. And if you listen to them, they all have very similar, you know, like the alien planet tones and the transporter and all that. Yeah. They have a very yeah. musical sound to them. They were all made by this thing and that's why we couldn't find them before. They were, yeah, they were makes part sense. of the music, I yeah. That was something I was actually wanting to talk a bit about was um, the Please. inclusion of voice and music in order to make a sound effect, mm -hmm. um, not just a musical environment um, or a uh, haunting environment, but um, because I noticed that there are some sound effects, even like laser sounds and other things where you can tell there's someone going pew pew under there. <laughs> you can tell, and most people can't tell, but we yeah. can tell, um, or someone going or someone, um jumping down a note with their voice a little bit and then really altering that well there um, there, there are a few guys that are like really really good like you know frank welker who's a cartoon yeah. voice guy who is amazing at you know performing sounds even yeah. even car sound with the engine everyday burn. objects yeah well the the very family i mean going way back you know the maxwell jack benny's car was performed by mel blank he actually yeah, yeah. he actually did it live That's we, awesome. actually, we used a little <laughs> bit about we used a little bit of it in uh, looney tunes back in action for um the heroes oh, cool. yeah also so doug it was there doug was at the the whole you know rko desilu paramount for mm -hmm. a while and then he was the head of sound over at Lorimar for a time during those yeah. old like dynasty and then Dallas and all those sort of days, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he did all that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he got he got some uh some Emmys and things and awards for um for a lot of shows, including Dallas. Dallas probably is the most popular one, mm -hmm. but he worked on a lot of things. Um <clears throat> police story. One potato, yeah. two potato. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I, I finished 
making his IMDb. So now you can you can oh, see wonderful. it, including things that he wasn't credited for. Um, and I've been helping out my grandma with hers as well. Oh, so, that's great. Uh, so if you look up Doug Grindstaff on IMDb, yeah. he has a listing now because I yeah. built all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so well, th uh, there was a really good uh, biography of him that was done. I think maybe even Marsha worked on it. Uh, that was in the Motion Picture Sound Editors uh, program book for the awards that he was given the Lifetime Achievement. There was a really good yeah. biography. I'll have to put that up on the museum oh, cool. page yeah. soon. Thanks. But uh, and he also I, he worked on Max Headroom. I think is that yep. Yep. yeah which was completely innovative at the time. I mean, we were huge fans yeah. of it. I there was remember. some influence from Britain where uh, yeah. its origin is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he, he worked heavily on that and, uh, and got, um, got a lot of praise for, for that work too. I love that show too. Oh, I, it was it was marvelous. <laughs> I had no idea he worked on that either. And I used to <laughs> sneak it in because I wasn't allowed to watch MTV at my house. Yeah. So when I go over to my grandma's house, the Mexican grandma, I could do, <laughs> I could watch anything. Um, so I'd get up early in the morning, spending the night there, and I go, mm -hmm. I get to watch MTV, liquid television, <laughs> Max Headroom, you know, Ren and oh. Stimpy and 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 Aeon Flux and all of that. Ren and um, Stimpy, great sound it. effects in Ren and Stimpy. Yes. I actually, I, the guy's a, a really good friend of mine, uh, My, Michael Geisler, who cut a lot mm -hmm. of those effects. And he's the guy who came up with a brilliant, you know, cartoon effects have their whole language that yes. have, has been established, you know, for, for years and years and years. And he came up with a few new ones that I just, you know, we are not worthy. One of them <laughs> is the, the, the take, the reaction, you know, when someone freezes and like, you know, clinches their teeth and looks around. The record scratch for that. Yes, yes. That was that was him on Ren and Stimpy, and now it's like it's you hear it in a ton of new contemporary. I, yeah, <laughs> that was Michael. I, I didn't realize that was Ren and Stimpy that made that popular. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah.